Vaters, für die Ehe, bitte zu Sancti. Amen. Uh, there were so many saints today uh, in like the, the lesser known saint, I don't know, pool or whatever it was. I actually lost track. There's a couple of good saints that I'm, I, they're, they're in very interesting lives. Um, one of them was a monk, a desert monk. I can't remember his name, but he stood outside once for 20 days and 20 nights, didn't sleep. Uh, didn't eat, just stood there for 20 days in, in the like freezing desert, 30 degrees at night, 100 degrees during the day. And then after 20 days, he's like, well, I guess I'm too weak. I'll just have to go back inside. So um, another time he went to a monastery um, of other monks and he petitioned to join and he's an old man. And the monks say, um, you know, you can't handle our austerities. So we're not gonna let you join us. They didn't know who he was. So he stood outside their gate for seven days and seven nights. Uh, again, not sleeping, not eating, just stood there for seven days. And then they're like, well, I, I, I guess you can come in. So then when he was there, he did, he did so many austerities, he, um, the other monks asked the abbot to have him leave because he was making them look bad. Uh, and so the, the abbot did. The abbot asked him, actually, uh, I'm sorry, you're, you're actually, you're, you're too hard for us. Uh, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Like, it is bad for morale. So uh, uh, a lesson in pride uh, that, that God taught that monastery through this saint. Um, I have to, have to maybe tomorrow tell you who he was. I can't remember his name now. I didn't write it down. Uh, a couple other saints for today, Saint um, Hortolana, who was a mother of Saint Claire of Assisi. She herself became a saint and she was in the same convent as her daughter, Saint Claire. Also Saint Theodora, the mother of Saints Cosmas and Damien. So maybe we, 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 know, we know these more, more famous saints, but let's not forget the women who uh, brought them up, right? They, they deserve uh, recognition also. Uh, this one's interesting, St. Maximus of Vienne. Uh, his family arranged a marriage for him, but he refused, and that led to, he, he got a beating by his father, and then he ran and he hid in the woods, and he lived in, in a hermitage or a cave, and he lived there peacefully for some time until his father was out on a hunting uh, trip, and he found him by accident. And so when his father found him, he gave him another beating, brought him back home, and said, the marriage is back on. Uh, so then his son once again fled and escaped. This time he went to a, a monastery, uh, became a monk, a priest, and then finally the abbot of St. Mauritius. I believe that's in, um, I think it's in France. So, um, I don't know, these, these strange stories. And it, it's, uh, this is how you know that these stories are true. You, you can't make this stuff up. It comes from somewhere. Uh, but our, our saint for today, and I don't know if he's today or tomorrow, I, I've seen variously the 2nd of January or the 3rd of January, and that is Saint Gaspar uh, del Buffalo. Uh, he's an Italian saint and founder of the Missionaries of the Most Precious Blood. And Saint Gaspar was born at Rome on the Feast of the Epiphany in the year 1786. Uh, so he had, a, he had poor health as a child. He almost went blind, but he was cured by prayers to St. Francis Xavier. And so he had a great devotion to St. Francis later in life. That would give him his kind of missionary spirit. Um, and he's one of those young boys uh, that every mother wishes she had. He was very uh, pious as a young child, had a great horror of sin, even venial sin. He had a love of the poor, um, an understanding of, of um, a, a love of prayer. And by the time he was 12 years old, uh, he went to a minor seminary, uh, basically, and was so zealous in catechizing others that people called him the, the little apostle of Rome. Uh, he eventually was ordained a priest in 1808 at age 24, and he worked with great zeal uh, for the church. And, and then um, a political upheaval. So this is 1810, and Napoleon Bonaparte had declared himself king of Italy in 1805. And it, by the time of 1810 came around, uh, Napoleon was requiring from everybody an oath of loyalty to him as, I don't know if it was king or emperor at this point, uh, but we, you know, it, this, this stuff never changes. So, so um, he's, been, he's been ordained, he's been a priest, there's this political upheavals going on, he's dragged before a general and asked to make a, uh, this oath of allegiance. Uh, now, uh, Pope Pius VII had forbidden it. He's like, nobody can take this oath of allegiance. And of course, many, many people still were. But St. Gaspar, uh, uttered a, uh, he had said this famous phrase in Italy, um, or Italian, non posso, non debo, non voglio, which means I cannot, I ought not, I will not. Uh, so great courage. Uh, he was consequently imprisoned and thrown into a foul dungeon. Um, dark, dank, you know, horrible food, horrible conditions. 
Uh, now, how long was I going to be there? How long would he be there? I mean, Napoleon Bonaparte had just been, like, tearing through Europe, conquering everybody, seemed to be unstoppable. So uh, uh, he didn't know how long he was going to be in there, and so he's in this dungeon, uh, and four years later, Napoleon falls, um, and he's released. And this always happens, right? These, these, these tyrants, these, these despots think that they're going to overthrow the church. They're going to think they're going to control everything. And they're a flash in the pan. They come and they go. They come and they're gone. It's over with. And guess what? The Catholic Church remains. Here we are 2,000 years later, uh, 2,000 years from now, if the universe still exists, if we haven't been destroyed ourselves by then, uh, the Catholic Church is still going to be here. And so there's no reason to, to, to fear. Even if, if we individually, right, if I die or we all get imprisoned or we all get martyred or whatever, the church is going to go on. So uh, Gaspar de Buffalo um, is released from prison and continues his priestly ministry. And now this time he begins a congregation called the Missionaries of the Most Precious Blood. And this uh, he gives uh, is designed to basically uh, travel throughout Italy and not going to faraway countries to evangelize, but evangelizing right there in Italy, right? The, the new evangelization 300 years ago. He was called, uh, this time he was called the Apostle of Rome and Hammer of Italian Freemasonry. They're pretty good titles. So he worked as an itinerant preacher from place to place. And th this shows the power of, let's see, what can I say, um, um, uh, teamwork. He would go into a parish, he would go into these places, and, and you already had pastors and priests working with people. Uh, but when you, when you have teamwork, when you have somebody who's really good at something, he would come in and preach these missions. And it said that, that he once preached a mission and 50 priests were hearing confessions after his mission. 50. And it still wasn't enough for everybody who wanted to go to confession. Uh, so the, the, this, is, this is how the church should operate, is you have the, the, not every priest is good at everything. You have good administrators, good preachers, good confessors, uh, you know, good whatever it may be. Uh, and in the church today, one of the problems is when you don't have enough priests to do everything, it's not just that you can't um, hear all the confessions and say all the masses, is you don't get the men who are really good at preaching. You don't get the men who are really good at administration, and it falls to those who aren't really good at it, and they get overwhelmed, and, and, and things fall behind. That's, that's one of the problems with, with a lack of vocations. You don't have the talent, you don't have the support, the mutual support among the priests. Uh, but we see that here in Italy, right? I mean, I can't imagine going and preaching in a place and having 50 priests hearing confessions or showing up and there's already 50 priests there. That would be great. Um, <clears throat> but this was happening in Italy uh, and, and Gaspar da Buffalo had uh, wonderful support uh, from his fellow priests, uh, but not from everybody. Uh, this is uh, a sad testament, this next, this next story uh, coming up, this next episode in his life. In that in his frequent travels, he would be going through the highways. And there's a reason we have the term highway robbery. Uh, many brigands, uh, many uh, uh, ruffians in hiding in bandits, you know, in, in the hills and the caves and so on. Uh, well, they would beset um, uh, Gas St. Gaspar and he would convert them. They, they, they wouldn't capture him. They wouldn't rob him. He would, he would uh, you could say he would rob them, right? He would, he would um, take from them their evil and give them grace. They, was, they would come in droves and lay their pistols and their knives and their daggers at his feet and be making confessions. And the people loved him because now the highways were safer. But guess who, guess who uh, hated it? Was the authorities responsible for taking care of the brigands. Not because he made them look bad by doing their job for them, but because they were taking bribes from the brigands. They were profiting off of it. That's why they let them continue. So now, when Gaspar del Buffalo made the place safer for the average citizen, he converted these brigands and gave them eternal life. He turned them aside from their wicked ways. He made the whole countryside better. The authorities responsible for doing that were furious because he, he, he reduced their profits. This is corruption. This is, this is, and this corruption has always been there and it always is, is, will be here and it is here now. So people, people realize, right? We think the government's here to help us. The government has our best interests in mind. <laughs> uh, you know, and there are people who do want, you know, what is good, but there are very many people to where this applies. So these authorities um, went to Pope, uh, who was it? Pope Leo the Twelfth, I think it was. Um, yeah, Pope Leo the Twelfth. These wolves in sheep's clothing, and they asked him to suspend uh, Saint Gaspar. They, you know, calum calumniated, slandered, and so on. 
Uh, but Pope Leo II, or the 12th, was a, uh, he was a good leader and, you know, a shrewd, I mean, he'd done this before, so he never listens to just one side of the story. He's like, okay, I got this from all these reputable authorities. He calls in St. Gaspar, and he listens to him very briefly, and then completely exonerates him and says, he's an angel, and lets him continue. Uh, so this wasn't enough. The authorities were going to have their way, and so now they tried to get him, uh, to remove him from preaching by having him promoted to Papal Nuncio, to Brazil. And Gaspar does not, he knows what's going on. They're trying to get rid of him because he's very effective. He knows this. But he's forced to take that position because it sounds like a good thing. Oh, you're so wonderful. Let, let's, let's promote you out of where you are, are effective and put you into this position of honor where who knows if he's qualified for it or not. A uh, classic tactic of Satan if he can't get you with, it's just like the, 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 the Roman um, uh, 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 magistrates. Right? They would, they would, they would uh, threaten, and then they would promise. They would go back and forth between, between pleasure and pain. So St. Gaspar is forced to actually to take this position for uh, a few years, but then he comes back and returns to uh, Italy and once again uh, um, uh, be, uh, preaches. Uh, so, but the, of course, you know, the enemies of God and the lovers of vice and money and this world and pleasure and so on uh, made, uh, stopped at no effort to suppress him and his order. And eventually they ended up, uh, St. Gaspar had his faculties removed. Couldn't hear confessions, couldn't preach, couldn't say public mass. Uh, that, that sounds familiar. I, I know priests to whom this has happened. And you know, it's a sure sign. If you get suspended, if you get your faculties removed for preaching the truth, <laughs> you're obviously doing something right. I know that. I know priests who've been suspended. And they says, no, it's not that what you said was false. It's because it's going to get us in trouble. Um, so this, is, this always happens. It's, it's never going to stop. Um, and, and the answer is not anger. The answer is not going to be getting mad or rebelling or, or being disobedient. And that was what St. Gaspar uh, showed. He showed this is God's work, not his, by his humility and his resignation. Uh, though he was misjudged, his whole life work was, was menaced by the very authorities who should have been helping him and supporting him. He didn't show any resentment. He forgave his enemies. Uh, he even made excuses for them. He, he, he dismissed them and said, no, very, very charitable. And this shows that patience obtains all things. Um, after uh, just a short time, uh, St. Gaspar was restored to his position. His faculties were, uh, were, uh, were restored, and he resumed his work with zeal. And he wasn't very old. Uh, in 1836, let's see, a cholera outbreak occurred at Rome, and he was only 50, uh, but he, oh, his whole life, right? He was sickly as a child, and that kind of uh, plagued him his whole life, was illnesses and sicknesses. So despite the danger, he goes to Rome to assist the poor and the dying in this epidemic. Uh, and he worked for uh, one year before he himself became fatally ill, and he died in the midst of his labors on 28 December in 1837. And he was beatified uh, by Pius X on 29 August 1904, and then canonized uh, later. Uh, so, um, you know, Gaspar de Buffalo, uh, through it all, through uh, political turmoil, uh, a hostile takeover by a foreign nation, false accusations, corruption in the church, corruption by civil authorities, um, he, he maintained his peace and his patience. Um, and, and, and we have, we have that, that example for us today. Right? Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, I say this so many times, but it just it bears repeating. Uh, we have no cause, no good reason to lose our peace. Anything which causes us to lose our peace is a bad reason. Uh, if, if we know history, we know the lives of the saints, we're going we're to be able to rest on that and say, okay, whatever's happening to me right now, whatever bad thing has happened to somebody before, how did they deal with it? <laughs> with patience, with resignation, uh, with, with, with silence, with obedience, right? Proper obedience. Uh, and then the, the, the church has continued, right? Here we are uh, going through the same thing. It's like somehow we think that the whole church and all of history is suddenly unique in my position. It's been going on for, for, for 2,000 years and, and, and 4,000 years before that in the Old Testament. Nothing's new. It's happened before. Uh, so, you know, just be at ease. Be at ease. Be at peace. Don't worry about anything. And if, if, you, if you come across anybody else who's just upset or worried or anxious, I, I want your inner peace to, like, overflow and, and, and splash on them, right? Other people should be like, wow, you're so peaceful. How, how do you do this? You're like, hey, this has happened before. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, so, so, so spread that, right? Spread that. This is, this is the, the attitude, the, the, the disposition we need going into this new year, right? Which who knows what it's going to bring. Uh, but whatever happens, uh, we can be peaceful, right? Gaspar de Buffalo, he didn't convert people by, um, obviously he converted people without the help of the authorities, without the help of the church. And he converted them anyways, because it's always the love of Christ. If we have that, we've got everything we need. So let us rest and be confident in that. Uh, St. Gaspar de Buffalo and all holy saints, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.